Greetings, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. John Hammond coming from Norwich, UK. This is the 20th July, 2020. I'm here in the square called the Haymarket. Behind me, you can see the St. Peter Mancroft uh, church building. You can see this little place I've got here. God's given me a territory here, a place to be. It's a locked gate into what used to be a coffee bar. It's the church grounds, but it's, uh, it's got walls on three sides, so it's physically a sheltered place. But of course, if I swing around here, you can see the open square in front of the open door. And it is, of course, prophetic. That anybody's welcome to come into God's presence here. This is the mystery of faith. The world that doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in the God who's in us. And we are, of course, the born again, spirit filled disciples of Christ. I want to use the word Christian, but of course these days that can mean anything. Christian music, Christian church, Christian ministry, Christian products, Christian service, Christian this, Christian that. Same with the evangelical, that used to mean something, but now it's meaningless as far as the world's concerned. Uh, same as sanctification, doesn't mean anything to the world. We try to explain it, but they've got no terms of reference at all. I'm talking about this modern young generation. The older generation, of course, we went to Sunday school. Uh, whether we dropped out of Sunday school in teenage years, and whether we came back from backsliding, so-called, <clears throat> we had a foundation of the truth about Jesus Christ, who he was, historical figure, but so much more. These days, it's just another religion. Uh, in the, in the, in the uh, schools, I mean. It's just comparative religion. Christianity is just the same as every other religion, only the figurehead, so to speak, Christ, uh, is relatively unique, but there are all sorts of types of Christ, Buddha, Mohammed, uh, the prophets, uh, the Torah, all that uh, religious business. <clears throat> no wonder the world is confused. The author of confusion is the devil. God is not the author of confusion. So here I am, just inside the door of this gateway. And it's a physical gateway, but if people come towards this gateway, they can ask me questions. Um, I have engaged over the last 20, 30 years with people who are literally lost in the city. And of course I ask them, are you lost? They're looking at a map, it's pretty obvious. And I, when I direct them physically, I then talk to them about their lost state. And I'll sow a seed of some sort to them, which they obviously will remember. Uh, sort of a joke, are you lost? Yes, this is where you go today. But for your future, give your life to Christ. The field is white to harvest. This is the hay market in the Norwich, UK. It is very much a key place, it always has been. And um, yesterday there was a, a group here and um, the police didn't interfere. It was a public meeting and uh, <clears throat> the gospel was preached, testimonies were shared. Personally, I had four encounters with people um, three already saved but there was a fellowship in the Holy Spirit and one was a needy lady where I was sitting God strategically placed me in a corner of the square to observe everything with a wall behind me and um, this lady came and asked me if she could sit at my feet and of course the body language of that she physically was sitting at my feet, but of course the Spirit of Christ is in us, and she had come really to the feet of God. Of course, God doesn't, didn't mind. She sat there and um, started to smoke a cigarette, which of course was um, a fragrance, which was not well appreciated. Me being an ex-smoker, 
She sensed it, apologised, moved a little bit further away, finished her cigarette, and um, we talked a little bit. I gave her Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to 13. And at the end of the meeting, I actually wrote it on a card so that she wouldn't forget. And I went across and gave it to her uh, with an instruction from the Lord to find her way to the Christian bookshop and see if they've got a recovery Bible. Personally, uh, this is a version of the Bible which is aimed at those who are looking for recovery but are in recovery, first step, admit they've got a problem. I have personally been led by God, the Holy Spirit, to buy several, put in the inscription, and uh, to give it to whosoever believes in Jesus Christ and wants to recover from the sin of idolatry, which is addiction, alcoholism, drug addiction, etc. It's a dependency on a worldly, physical, worldly substance, which is not God. So that in itself becomes the idol. So I now the Christian bookshop is becoming open again, I believe. Um, I do want to um, see if I can get hold of three or four, maybe five or six recovery Bibles for the use of those in recovery who are either physically part of the Overcomers in Christ group or they will be connected to us in a looser sense out in the community and uh, the Lord has told us where two or three gather, he is with us. So here come two candidates, of course, I know them by sight, might even know their names, but they are not, uh, as far as I'm aware, in the peace of Jesus yet. Drug addicts, alcoholics, yeah. Seen them around for years. And, um, God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Personally, God came into my life 36 years ago, set me free from addictions, drunkenness, smoking, work as a workaholic, and um, gambling. That was another one of my things I used to do with my money, wasting my money, wasting my time. Jesus says, those whom the Son sets free are free indeed. Freedom is coming back to the city. People are around. If I swing around, you'll see people walking. Square is fairly well populated. People are socially distant, except in twos and threes. And nobody's policing that because the assumption is um, you are in a bubble with those nearest and dearest to you. We're getting back to normal over there in McDonald's. You see McDonald's in the background there. The queue is distant in twos, generally twos, people pairing up, going for lunch. But of course, Jesus was talking about the church being people, not buildings. And significantly, now that the buildings have been closed down, God has clearly told them that his father's house is for prayer and not buying and selling. It cannot be simpler than that. The challenge is to those who run the church buildings is who's going to pay for it. That's always been the challenge. The fact is that Jesus never built a building. He never hired a building. He never paid for a building. He didn't even live in a building. Of course, the early church, when 3,000 were added to the church, the body of Christ, there was no name of the denomination. They were added to the church. Church meaning ecclesia, people. So the people of God, 120, 100 whatever, turned into 3,000 plus and households. And where do they go? Well, of course, they put all their money together uh, found someone, an accountant, to register a charity, 
built a business, built a building, built a business, employed staff, and started to distribute food and clothing for profit. No, absolutely not. That was 2,000 years ago. By the evolution of Christianity by the year 2020, it has become a business, charitable business, non-profit making business. But Jesus didn't say set up Christian businesses and Christian music and record Christian music. He absolutely didn't say that. Well, it's not written in the Bible, word for word. But look at the sense of it. We follow Christ. We don't follow the ways of this world. And, and the business world, which is where I came from in the, from the 80s, 70s, 80s, the business world is full of selling services and or products. Even money became a product, which they started to sell, discount putting us into debt and credit and so forth and so forth. So this is year 2020. So what is the Spirit of God saying? Read the Bible. Look at the early church. They were in each other's houses sharing everything in common. And that's the challenge. Do good, especially to the household of faith. These days, we need the Holy Spirit more and more. The indwelling Holy Spirit, he's our teacher. He's the one who guides us. The trouble is they've tried to, I mean emphasis tried to, restrict the freedom of the Holy Spirit to turn up in private meetings and to give some feedback. That is what prophecy is, feedback. God is wanting to feed back to his people where things are good and where things are not so good. That's what the letters of Revelations are about, seven letters. But of course, there are 21 other letters in the New Testament, the New Covenant, plus the seven. There's 28 letters that God himself caused to be written through obedient servants who wrote down what the Lord said. All scriptures God breathed. Man had the pen, so to speak, but the inspiration for these radically new thoughts came from God himself. Through Jesus Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God was speaking then and, and God is speaking today. And like I said, the Holy Spirit is saying, read the Bible. Go back to the beginning. Isaiah chapter six to Isaiah chapter 10 talks about a tree being cut down to the stump. And from that one stump comes the righteous branch of Jesus Christ. And God himself is grafting us in to the root. And God is the root, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God is not only the root, God provides the water through the root into the branches, and the water becomes the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Nothing of self brethren, nothing of self. The fruit of the Spirit is not self-produced. We're not producing it. It's not an it. It's not something we can manufacture. The, the love of God is the love of God. Peace, joy, kindness, goodness. We cannot manufacture the love of God. We cannot make up love. The love of God is God. God is love. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Love, joy, and peace. All these registered charities. There comes a point when you realize that our works are filthy rags. These charities are useful. They're useful. Where do people get help? I send them to a charity. Why? Because that's where help is. But I don't send them to get charity from the charity. I, go to, I send them to get God's help. Because God is a God who helps. The question is, who gets the glory? 
where does the glory go? To the charity, we've got some international charities which are wealthier than many denominations. They are wealthier, more prosperous, and much of the fundraising goes on the admin. And so they've got offices, buildings, people are giving to the charity, but they're giving to people's wages, etc., etc. And it becomes a system. Where do, pe where, where do people get housed through the council? Where do they get health through the national health? The system in the West is very sophisticated and civilized. Many of these ideas, in fact, all good gifts come from God. The idea of the national health was that we would pool resources so that if someone needed help, the rich could pay for the poor. And it was like an insurance policy, national insurance. And everybody paid into the fund to help the poor. But they've turned health into a business. They've turned care into a business. They've turned everything into a business. Counseling is a business. Pastoral care is a business. But Jesus never set up a business. Jesus was not a businessman. Jesus was not a Christian businessman. Jesus wasn't even a Christian. Now that, let that sink in because some people think that Jesus was the first Christian. They don't even know what Christian means. Christ-like. Jesus wasn't like Christ, he was Christ. So what am I saying? Let God be God, and let everyone else be proved a liar. God exists. God is real. Only God gave me life and set me free. 36 years ago, I wouldn't be here, I'd be dead. And then where, where would I be? I would be in hell, I knew it. I knew my destiny was hell. But God made a way where there seemed to be no way and I wasn't even looking for the way out of hell. God set me free from my destiny of hell. And then when I joined the Freemasons, that was confirmation. I was put into a grave through a ceremony in the dark, and that's where I was going to spend eternity. But God, in his wonderful way, the audible voice of God said, you are in with the wrong lot. And I shuddered when the truth hit home. Yes, I am, I said to myself, but I was trapped in the grave. Two months later, Billy Graham comes to Norwich. I know there's a lot of criticism about Billy Graham, his roots, his spirituality, but Billy Graham didn't save me. Jesus saved me through the, the truth, the gospel, prodigal son. God is your father waiting for you, prodigal son, to come back to him. And that's when God came into my life, set me free. I became born again. I woke up the next day, I didn't want to drink didn't want to gamble, swearing was cleared up, smoking was a thing of the past. God began a process, an indwelling process of, of cleaning me, cleansing me by the blood of the Lamb, sanctify me from within. And those whom the sun sets free are free indeed. I try to work I tried to stay in the world's business, but my spirit didn't fit there anymore. And they knew that and they got rid of me, gave me money, go away. Tried to work with some Christians, that didn't work out. Tried to work for the church, that didn't work out. I came onto the streets in the 90s. God said, tell me what you see. Like he said to Jeremiah at the potter's house, tell me what you see. And so I just told God what I saw. Society has changed in 25 plus years, 28 years nearly. The field is white to harvest. The lockdown has come and gone. Now there's the threat, a rumor of another wave coming, a rumor of another conflict with this virus, another war with this virus. 
the governments are all got plan A, plan B, plan C, buying and selling, shopping, cashless society. We're living through these prophetic times. These times were all prophesied. But I sit here looking across the square, shoppers, people eating, buying and selling, eating and drinking. As in the days of Noah, the end will come. And there'll be no, I'll change my mind, I'll give my life to you, Jesus, now. It'll be too late. Jesus said it, as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Jonah. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. There is so much done in the name of Jesus, but it's vanity, vanity, vain glory. God is jealous for his glory. He will not give his glory to another. Father, you've told me already, many are called, few are chosen. I don't even know how to pray these days, Father. I'm starting to understand how the Spirit of God moves on once the hearts are, are so hard that they will not change the Spirit of God moves on and they don't know like Laodicea they don't know the Spirit of God has left them Jesus was on the outside of Laodicea probably. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. Father, I just pray you would raise up the true ambassadors of Christ to come onto the square increasingly in twos and threes not wearing white collars or special shirts, but just engage with people, hidden in Christ, so that we can engage, so people realize there is a God nearby. You say in your word, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Persevere in what God is calling you to do. Yesterday morning, I was invited to speak to a group of five people from another nation. And they were meeting in the open air in one of the parks in the city. And I was invited to speak. And I, I, as I prayed, I said, Lord, I don't know where to begin. And I started to weep and pray in tongues and weep. And when I realized that the bottom line was the thing to tell them the first. We're all equal in Christ. Young and old, rich and poor, Jews and Gentiles, men and women, we're all equal in Christ. It's about Christ. The church is all about Christ. It's not how good we are, what we do, patting ourselves on the back, look how good we are. The whole purpose of church is to worship God 
and to obey him and to take this gospel out of the buildings and into the community where you live love your neighbors is where you live and then when you go down the city or the shops have a word in season ready in season and out of season we'll leave it there brethren brethren of the one god his one church throughout this world jesus is coming he's coming for the spotless land those born of God will not continue to sin. The blood of the Lamb has cleansed us, is cleansing us, keeps cleansing us, keeps us free of all the spirits of this world. And some of the wor worst spirits of this world we contend with, religious spirits. The spirit of the Pharisee, the spirit of the Sadducee, the spirit of the scribe. Even the disciples got into competition. Peter, I follow Peter, I follow Apollos, I follow Paul. We follow Christ and Christ in Paul. Through the scriptures is still speaking and Peter. And all the disciples, Lord, you've used them all to help us today. Good faithful servants. Father, we've started this race. Enable us to continue this race, Father, and to, to uh, be there to pick people up who, who fall and trip. And, and Lord, to preempt them falling. This is what many people won't accept in the churches, that you're the God who wants to preempt people going wrong. Prophecy, warning, if you do this, some disaster will befall on you. And people say, well, I'll learn the hard way. And, and, and Lord, you say, I don't want you to learn the hard way. You're like the father with a child, and the child keeps wanting willfully and keeps falling over. And you're trying to help the child, but stubborn pride in your people, Father. Stubborn pride. These are your people, your children, your sheep, Jesus, not mine. Help me to help them, Father. Holy Spirit, we need you. Pour out your Spirit, Lord God, on all flesh in this city, Norwich, UK. Afresh today, your mercy is new every morning. Pour out your Spirit, Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. God bless you, brethren of the one God. Jesus is coming. This, today is the day of salvation. No one is promised tomorrow. We only have today while it is today. Mighty God. God bless you. God bless you.